Edgar Hoover was one of the greatest investigators and administrators this country has ever known, but he was 68 years old. His knowledge of blacks came from the area around Washington when blacks were allowed to be nothing more than janitors and chauffeurs. He felt that they should be restricted to that. He asked me to make the most intensive investigation in the Bureau's history about the influence of communists on the civil rights movement and on Dr. King. I knew he wasn't going to like my conclusions. There has been an obvious failure of the Communist Party of the United States to appreciably infiltrate, influence, or control large numbers of American Negroes in this community. Dr. King? There's no reason to suspect uh, him being a communist or a communist sympathizer. This memo reminds me vividly of those I received when Castro took over Cuba. You contended then that Castro and his cohorts were not communists and were not influenced by communists. Time proved you wrong. Yes. Mr. Hoover, I can only report my findings to you as honestly as I can. I, I spent a good many months working on that report. You know? I know you have. Yes, I did that. I know you've taken time for it that you could have been doing other things. That's why it's all the more disappointment. Well, I can't help it if those are the conclusions that I honestly reached. I said that, uh, excuse me. I said that, uh, Back here, I said that time alone would tell. And over here, I said that they're making prodigious efforts to infiltrate them. I said that. Why are you qualifying this for? You've made your report. speak to me for months. To be in trouble with Hoover was a serious matter. He was capable of firing a whole department. We all had mortgages on homes, children in school, etc. Take down this memo. We regret greatly that the memo did not live up to what the director has a right to expect from us, from our analysis. But now, we're stressing the urgent need for imaginative and aggressive tactics to be utilized through our counterintelligence program to attempt to neutralize or disrupt the party's activities in the Negro field. We must mark King now, if we have not already done so. As the most dangerous Negro to the future of this nation. From the standpoint of communism, the Negro, and national security. I can't understand how you can so agilely switch your thinking. Now you want to load down the field with more coverage in spite of your past evaluation. I don't intend to waste time and money until you can make up your minds what the situation really is. What does he want with us? What does he want? You know what he wants, don't you? He wants us to tell him he was mild in his assessment of the influence of communists on King and the movement, even though there's no evidence there's any he wants us to out Hoover Hoover. Find out if there's any possibility of using Mrs. King. Find out if there are any disgruntled employees. Find out about all the financial dealings of King and what we can exploit to our advantage. Give me the files on King's age, will you? Can't find anything on King. Maybe we can find something on them. 
That's what Hoover wants. People later ask me whether I thought what we were doing was illegal, unethical, or immoral. The matter of legality, morals, or ethics was never raised by myself or anyone else. Why did you crack their father today, Marty? They tease me because of him. They say your father's a jailbird. Do you know why he goes to jail? He goes to jail to help people. Do you remember when you wanted to go to Fun Town? Remember how you felt when we told you you couldn't go because you were black? Your father couldn't sleep all night. He had to go to Birmingham the next day and he said, tell him that it isn't because he's not as good as anybody else. Tell him that he'll be able to go someday. So you gotta help him, Marty, because he doesn't like going to jail. He's as frightened of it as anybody else, and he's alone. He's very much alone. I want to thank you for what was said. It had never been said before. Thank you, but I'm concerned about this march. We want a civil rights bill, not a television spectacular. Supposing there's an incident. There won't be an incident. I know those fellas on the hill. I spent a good many years with them. Now, you don't want them to say, Yes, I am for the bill, but I'll be damned if I'll vote for it at the point of a gun. If they don't want to vote for it, they'll find a reason not to, won't they? It isn't the time. You know, I've never been engaged in any direct action movement that didn't seem ill-timed. You know, some people thought that Birmingham was ill-timed. Including the Attorney General. Yes. If you want to hold the march, there's nothing we can do to stop you. Robert wants to talk to you about something. Certainly. Uh, would you mind, Mr. Vice President? Dr. King? I'd like to talk to you about an advisor of yours. What advisor? Stanley Levison. What about Stanley? Hoover says he's a communist. <laughs> you know, I thought we'd gone beyond that in this country. McCarthy's dead, but the melody lingers on. I've looked at the files. There's enough ammunition there. What sort of ammunition? People have said things about him. There are statements that he's made. People have said things about you, too. There are statements you've made. Would you like to be held accountable for everything you've said? I'm a pragmatist. I'm telling you these things can be used and they can be used effectively. Now, you'll have to dismiss Levis. It isn't as easy as that. He's a valuable man to the movement. And in addition, he is a friend of mine. The Southern strategy is going to be to say that the civil rights movement is riddled with communists. I've got a civil rights bill I want to pass. We can't take a chance of anything hurting that, can we? 
There is no choice. I have to go. You've had to work in the shadows because there are racists and whole people who don't like the idea of a white man contributing too much. Stanley, I owe you so much. You know when they tried to frame me on taxes? You said it isn't up to you to defend yourself. It's up to us to defend you. It'll be you against the state of Alabama, but the people will believe you. No, oh, it doesn't matter now. Does it? Nothing must be allowed to hurt the movement. I wonder whether it's worth it. I wonder whether in spite of it all, I shouldn't just call Hoover on this thing and see it out all the way to the end. He tried that once. He gets a better press than you. experience of my life. Stanley's leaving the movement. I've talked to the Attorney General's office. He has no evidence. It's a downright lie. Stanley's not a communist, never has been. We need that bill. We can't take a chance on anything, Hurdy. We need that bill, but I wonder is anything worth doing, Mr. Stanley? Washington is a city of spectacle. Every four years, there are imposing presidential inaugurations. But in its entire history, Washington had never seen a spectacle the size and grandeur that assembled there on August 28, 1963. 250,000 people journeyed that day to the Capitol. They came from almost every state in the Union. They came in every form of transportation. They were an army without guns, but not without strength. 